So in this video, we're going to derive the expression for how to find the difference in pressures at different depths in a fluid. So first of all, we have we have pressure is equal to well, we just have the perpendicular force over the area. If we sum up everything, uh, and now what we want to do is let's say we have this this container of water. Uh, this is full of water and we've highlighted this element small infinitesimally small or infinitesimally thin element of water this isn't an object that we submerged this is just a, a volume of water that's already in here uh, let's say that it has some dimensions so it'll be dy thick and let's give it some reference so we'll say that this is zero and so then up to the bottom of our element here this would be y and then up to the top of the element well this would just be y plus dy. All right, let's say also, let's say we need some more information on here. So the bottom of this element is going to have a pressure pushing up on it. So this will have a pressure, uh, which will give us a force pushing up of this, we can say f is going to equal, equal p times a, right? The force caused by this pressure on the bottom half is going to be pushing up with a force of p times a. Now on the top here, we're going to have a pressure pushing down on it. And this pressure will be P plus DP, right? We're adding this DP because we have this small change in Y as well. So resulting from that, the force that's going to be pushing down caused by this, uh, we're going to have our force is going to equal negative because of our convention, we've said Y is pointing up in the positive direction. So we'll have negative P plus DP times A, our area. All right, so what else do we know about this? Well, now we can say some things about the volume, the mass, and the weight. So first of all, our volume, we know that our volume, well, this is an infinitesimally small little thin element, so we're going to say the volume is dv. Uh, and another way that we can express this uh, is a times dy, where a is this, this surface here that we've already talked about, the top and bottom surface, which is the same, or base times length. Okay, so for mass, what we can do, mass, well, we'll just say that that's dm. And another way that we can write dm was just rho dv. And this goes back to the last video that we were talking about. If you're talking about mass, well, rho is the density, that's mass per volume, and this is just volume, so they cancel out and give us back mass again. Okay, and then another way we can write this is, well, we have dv up here, so we can say that this is rho a dy. And lastly, something that we're going to need to talk about is weight, because we're going to be doing some force balancing in about two seconds. So we will say that weight is dw, and then what we can say also that this is dmg. Right, weight is just mass times gravity, but we're dealing with dm in this case. So we can write this again as just rho g a d y. Yeah, there we go. I'm not sure why I put the G halfway through, but we'll just work with that. Um, so what we need to do is we know that this is in static equilibrium. This element's not going to be moving up or down. This fluid's not mixing around or anything like that. So we can say, maybe let's change colors. Let's say that the sum of forces in the Y direction has to be equal to zero for this equilibrium condition. So what we can do is we can say that, well, if we have a force pushing up on it, we're going to have PA then we're going to have minus, because this force is going to be pushing down, so minus P plus DP times A. And we're also going to have to account for its weight pushing down. So we're also going to have rho G A DY, and these are all going to add up to zero. So first of all, let's go ahead and divide everything by area, so we can get rid of that. So that disappears, and when we rewrite this equation, we'll have P minus P plus DP, actually that's not a plus anymore. This minus sign will get distributed through, so that actually becomes minus DP. Uh, and we can move this up to the other side, so we have equals rho G DY. All right, so now we see these P's are gonna cancel out, or we're gonna subtract one from the other, and they're the same. So what we get is if we bring DY down to here, and we'll bring the negative sign over, we will have dp over dy is equal to rho g, and it has a negative sign in front of it. So what this is basically saying that in order for this to be true, well, rho and g aren't going to be changing at all. Um, so if y increases, then p has to decrease. So the pressure has to decrease if the y increases. And that makes sense. If you think about going down to the bottom of the ocean or something, it's going to be a really high pressure down there. 
Um, so as you move up, our pressure decreases in any column of fluid. All right, so now what we have to do though, um, let's, uh, let's bring this dy back up here and let's do some integration and see what we can get. So we'll have, uh, you know what, let's go, let's bring it over here. Uh, so we'll have dp is equal to negative rho g dy. And rho g is a constant, and we want to integrate both sides. So we'll just put our integral signs here. So we'll have from 1 to 2, and from 1 to 2. And when we integrate this, we'll get, what do we get here? We'll have p2 minus p1 uh, is equal to negative rho g times y2 minus y1. And this here, this is the expression. Let's put a big... Let's put a big circle around this. This here is the expression for pressure in a fluid of uniform density. Again, assuming that this density is not changing, it really simplifies the problems. And in most fluid mechanics classes, that's probably the assumption we're going to be making anyways. So there we go. That is how we derive it. And another common way to represent this is, imagine that we have the surface of the water up here. This is going to get kind of messy, but if we have the surface of the water up here, um, and we measure down from the surface, you know, if we say this is zero and we say that this length is h, uh, then what we can do is we can say that, again, the pressure here, so we usually would be using uh, atmospheric pressure, we call this p naught, and then we want to find out what the pressure at this level is. Uh, the expression for that is p is equal to, oops, p naught plus density g h, and you can see that's obviously just manipulated by, by you rearranging this formula. So sometimes they ask you to measure, you know, yeah, what's the pressure at a certain depth in a tank? And if you know the atmospheric pressure, then you can easily find what the pressure is at any depth.